591 pages. Like, that's, that's doable. You know, walk in a park. Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and this is the last TBR game of 2022. I cannot believe it, we're in December already. That's mad. Honestly, it's scary how quick the year's gone, but this is the very last TBR game. So let's get into what my TBR game is for those of you that don't know. It is very simple. I roll a six colored sided dice a minimum of five times. If the same color comes up twice, I do a reroll, but I only do a maximum of two rerolls. So I have anywhere between five to seven books to read for the month. The color correlates to a little figure that sits on top of a prompt. We need to choose a prompt for this month to make it up to six. So let's do that. Okay. Oh, okay. Horror. I don't have many horror books on my TBR, to be honest. It's not a genre I read a lot of. Before we get into the first roll, though, I do have four books that are already on my TBR because I'm doing my 24 hour Tackle Your TBR readathon. And these are the four books that are on that. If you'd like to know more about these books and about the readathon, I will have the announcement video linked below so you can go check that out. Normally, I would try and get at least two of these books onto my TBR for the month, but these are all pretty manageable, so I'm not going to bit of a risky move but I'm not going to I'm going to keep these separate just for that 24 hour readathon and apart from that there is nothing else I need to read this month as far as I know from the day of filming this I've got no buddy reads or anything like that lined up so we're pretty open which is very nice the last couple of months I've had books that I've needed to fit onto my TBR but this month it's very much I choose whatever I feel like so that's great let's get into the first roll and the first roll for December oh yellow and we knocked the yellow off. <laughs> a nice easy one, Animal on the Cover. You know what, Animal on the Cover is so easy because you can just choose whatever genre you feel like and just go for something that has an animal on the cover. Why am I explaining that to you guys? I'm pretty sure you know what that prompt was. Okay, anyway, moving on. I have two books for you to choose from, so please let me know which one you think I should be reading for the month of December. We have two completely different genres as well. We have Penelope Ad by Margaret Atwood and this is a Greek myth retelling. This is all about Penelope who is the wife of Odysseus who goes on the long journey from the Odyssey by Homer. All about Penelope's story and what she had to do in those intervening years when her husband was off in the Trojan War and then got waylaid. I'm really intrigued by this. I've heard really good things so that's one of them. A nice short one. Or we have an adult fantasy and this is The Ninth Rain by Jen Williams. They both have birds on the cover actually, we went for a bird theme. But this one is one that I picked up because of Elliot from Elliot Brooks, I'll have her channel linked below. She has been raving about this series, she thinks it's really good. This has been on my TBR for ages, I think I picked it up maybe earlier this year, I'm not sure. I think maybe at the very start of this year, whereas the Penelope was a bit more of a recent, I say recent, like probably about three months rather than the nine. Again, you don't need to know this. Oh my gosh, we're in ramble territory today and we're only on the first roll. But this one's adult fantasy and I don't know too much about it. I just know that there's witches, humans, elves, and it's meant to be quite a good darker fantasy. I'm not sure. I have been trying to get back into adult fantasy a bit more and actually reading some of the ones that I've got on my TBR. I have high hopes, but we'll see. So let me know, do you want the Greek myth, which is Penelope Ad, or the adult fantasy, Ninth Reign? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, and if you've read either of them, like, what do you think of those? Choosing a new prompt, let's go with this one. Okay, another cover choice, and that is dark cover. Right, roll number two. The second roll, let's see what we get. Yellow, again. Okay, so that's dark cover. Choosing another prompt. Ooh, what's fast becoming my favourite genre? Mystery. The first re-roll already. Orange, under 500 pages. I don't think I've ever had a re-roll this early on. Like, I don't think that's happened. Which I don't know whether it's a really bad thing and it's like an omen of what's to come. Or if it's good because at least we got it out of the way sooner rather than later. I don't know. The first prompt, well, 
the first of the second prompt, we have Dark Cover, so another cover pick, and I've decided to go with Summer Suns by Lee Mandelo. And this is a book I picked up because it's been recommended if you like Dark Academia. And I do like Dark Academia, it's something that I had a bit of a rocky start with, but now I know what I like in my Dark Academia, and that is definitely more of an actual murder mystery that's going on, an unreliable narrator, basically if we were villains. I loved that book. It was fantastic. I have high hopes for this one as well. I think the cover looks absolutely stunning. We're gonna give this one a try. I don't know too much about this one. I don't want to know. I just know that we were following Andrew and his best friend Eddie. They did everything together until Eddie dies and Andrew's trying to find out what happened and what's going on and then he starts getting tangled up in this. I think it's like a secret society-ish esque thing that's been going on at the school that Eddie was going to go to. Like, I'm not sure on that bit, I could have that bit totally wrong, but I just know Andrew is trying to find out what happened to his friend Eddie and things aren't quite what do they seem, which sounds great. It sounds great. And then we got a nice prompt to make up for the fact that it was a reroll and that's under 500 pages. And for this one, I've actually gone for a very short one because I'm going with a book from Charles Dickens Christmas books. So this bind up has four Christmas books that Charles Dickens wrote. And I did say to myself last year that I want to read one of these every year. So this is year two. I need to read the second book in this bind up, which is the chimes so i read a christmas carol last year and i did really like it i read it on christmas eve and i'm so happy i did that this one is the chimes oh no there's five books in here i guess it'll be over five years the chime i've got no idea what the chimes is about i've never heard of it but i am intrigued it's 90 pages long and i do plan on doing what i did last year and reading this on christmas eve so i'm actually really pleased i fitted this on here i wasn't sure if i was going to be able to but that prompt works perfectly. So no, I will not be reading all of this, but I will be reading 90 pages and reading that one. I've never read this. I wonder, have you read The Chimes? Do you know what it's about? Let me know in the comments below because I have not heard of it. If you know, let me know. Prompt time. Let's go, let's go at the back actually. Ooh, this one. Oh, okay. Historical fiction. This I always get nervous about, like I like it as a genre, but do you know how much I have to work myself up to actually read something from the genre? Which is weird because I do enjoy the books, but I just always need that extra push to actually read them. Do you ever find that, that you know you're gonna enjoy a book, but you just don't pick it up? It's weird. Is this just a me thing? Let me know. Okay, anyway, three, roll number three. Let's go. Roll number three. Ooh, pink representation. I'm really pleased representation came up. When I pulled this last month, I knew exactly the book that I wanted to read for it and I have been waiting. So I'm gonna go for a reread. And the reread is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson and I'm so excited. So this is book one in the Stormlight Archive. I love this series, it's fantastic. It's massive because this is part one of book one. Actually been split into two paperbacks. So you have book one, part one, and book one, part two. I would love to say to you that I'm gonna get both of these read because they are technically the same book. However, I'm not gonna put that pressure on myself and just focus on part one. Together, these are over a thousand pages long. I really like the split paperback editions. I find the hardbacks just too big and heavy because of how many pages there are. So I always go for the split paperbacks when I can and I've just been dying to reread this series. But as I said, we're gonna be focusing on just part one. And this is an epic adult fantasy series that I absolutely adore and there is loads of representation within this book but the main one that I'm using it for is actually depression. We have a main character in here who is one of my absolute favourites, Kaladin, and Kaladin is someone who has been solved into what is basically slavery. He is constantly fighting to get back so we're in this world where there's a massive war that's going on. We have two very opposing sides obviously and we have multiple characters that we follow that are on either parts of this conflict in very in different ways. This is so complex and I do such a terrible job of explaining it. I'm so sorry. So I'm just going to give you the synopsis. Speak again the ancient oaths. Life before death. Strength before weakness. Journey before destination. And return to men the shards they once bore. 
the night's radiant must stand again. Russia is a world of stone and storms. Its terrifying and frequent tempests have shaped ecology and civilization alike. It has been centuries since the fall of the ten consecrated orders known as the night's radiant, but their shard blades and shard plate remain. Mystical swords and suits of armour that transform ordinary men into near-invincible warriors. Men trade kingdoms for shard blades. Wars were fought for them and won by them. One such war is about to swallow up a soldier, Kaladim, a bright lord and a young woman scholar. This is so good. And that, even that synopsis doesn't give you much, but it does give you the basis of like, there is this war, you have all these shard plates and things. Like, it's such an expansive world, it's really difficult to sum up. And the things that I would tell you don't happen until like the later books and stuff, but it's fantastic. This will be the third reread I've done of this. I love it so much, would highly recommend. It's, it's fantastic. If you like adult fantasy, please read this if you haven't already. I know it seems daunting because there are, what, four books in this series so far and all of them are over a thousand pages long, but if you do what I do and get the split paperbacks, that's manageable. That's really manageable. I mean, like, this one is 591 pages. Like, that's, that's doable. You know, walk in a park, but really good. Really love this series, highly, highly recommend. I'm sorry I can't give you a better synopsis, but it is good, it's good. Let's go to roll number four. Oh, no, no, no. Let's choose a prompt for number four, or just, time to choose a new prompt. Okay, oh, okay, seriously, we're getting a lot of cover ones, and this one is foil on the cover. Roll number four, yellow. It's the third time, so I don't have to do a reroll, which is good that's mystery. Okay, we're loving the yellow today apparently, but as I said at the start of this, I only do a reroll if the colour comes up twice. It doesn't matter how many times it comes up after that. Had to do that. I never used to do that and the TBR used to be ridiculous. Anyway, we had mystery and of course knew exactly what book I was going to go for and that is none other than Agatha Christie. I'm so excited. I said when I started the short stories collection, the Tuesday Club Murders, that I would be reading an Agatha Christie every single month. And for the last two months, I've not read one, <laughs> which is terrible, but I am so excited to actually be starting a full novel by her. This is the first in the Miss Marple series, which is the murder at the Vicarage. I don't know too much about this. I don't want to know too much about it. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. I do love a murder mystery and I cannot wait to actually get on with my Agatha Christie journey and not just with the short stories but with the actual novels like oh it's gonna be so good. I'm so excited. So yes that is the one that I'm going to be reading. I don't know anything about this one. It does say oh oh this synopsis sounds good. Okay it was a careless remark for a man of the cloth and one which comes back to haunt the clergyman just a few hours later when the colonel is found shot dead in the clergyman's study. But as Miss Marple soon discovers, the whole village seems to have had a motive to kill Colonel Prothero. Don't know how to pronounce that. Hmm, interesting. I'm so excited. I cannot wait. I'm going to be doing mind maps. We're going to try and solve this. This is going to be so good. So good. Okay, right. Calm down. Calming down. Choosing a prompt for hopefully the last time for December and for 2022. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. I'm so hyped today. I need to calm down. Right, let's go. Oh, okay. Non-fiction. Wasn't feeling non-fiction this month, but let's see if it turns up. Roll number five. That is not the last roll for 2022. Okay, so it's a pink. We have foil on the cover. Now we're choosing the last prompt for 2022. Oh, please don't come up. That's over 500 pages. Okay, so now this is the last roll of 2022. Orange, not not what I wanted. But it's fine, it's fine, we can make it work. Historical fiction. Well, the last roll was not the last roll. We had a re-roll, but it's fine. It happens. 
So the first prompt of the fifth roll was foil on the cover and this one I'm going to continue a series and going with Monstrous Design by Kat Dunn. This is the second book in her Dangerous Remedy series. This is a series that's kind of inspired in part by Frankenstein, in part by like the French Revolution and everything. The first book does take place in France and we're following a little group that's kind of made themselves like a found family and they set about trying to free people that have been imprisoned by the revolution and everything that's going on. One of the people that they end up freeing turns out to have been a bit of a science experiment that people are desperate to get back and it puts them in a lot of peril. The end of the book, we see everything kind of going wrong and I'm intrigued to see where this is gonna go. This is a young adult series and I don't know I'm intrigued. I love the setting. This one is actually going to be in London. So we have 1794 in London and we're still looking for everything that happened in the first book which I don't want to be giving away spoilers. So we have half of them in Paris and half in London so I'm convinced we're going to get two different perspectives from the different countries as well which I think is going to be really interesting but I really do enjoy this sort of like historical period and seeing how it gets woven into a fantasy story something a bit lighter and keeping in vain of lighter for historical fiction I did decide to go for another young adult book and that is Court of Swans Melaine Dickinson and this one I'm not too sure what it's about I picked it up a few months ago at Yelk which is the YA literary convention and this one is in England 1381 and we're following Delia and Delia's life is shattered when her father dies. His wife accuses Delia's seven brothers of treason and murder. They are all being hauled off to the Tower of London to await their fate. Determined to rescue her brothers, Delilah is, secures a position as a seamstress for the Queen. Her quest is all but impossible as the executions continue. So yeah, it just seems like a core cool intrigue set in this time. So technically historical fiction because it is set in that time period and I don't think there's any fantasy elements to that. So yeah, I don't know, I'm intrigued. I haven't heard anyone talking about this one. So we're gonna give it a try. I think I got the hardback for like five pounds. I'm intrigued. Let me know if you've actually read this one. I have not, but I am quite happy to pick up a political historical fiction book and it would be interesting to read it from a YA perspective because normally with this sort of thing I do tend to read adult historical fiction so be interesting. But there we are that is the last TBR for 2022. I am so shocked it's the end of the year. So let's do a quick recap. We have historical fiction with the Court of Swans, another historical book but fantasy this time and that's Monstrous Design, a murder mystery we have The Murder at the Vicarage, a book for representation I'm going with an adult fantasy reread The Weight of Kings part one, under 500 pages we're doing a very short story for Christmas books ready for Christmas Eve I'm very excited so we're just going to be reading The Chimes, for a dark cover we are going with a dark academia book and that is Summer Suns and then of course the final book which you all need to choose for me and that's either going to be a Greek myth retelling the Penelope ad or an adult fantasy the Night of the Rain. We have a nice little selection here of fantasy books, historical books, mystery books, like I feel like it's going to be a good time but there we have it that is the last TBR of 2022. A bit chunkier than what I thought which does make me hesitant for my 24 hour readathon but we can do it, we got this. But there we go, let me know what you're going to be reading in the month of December, what you're hoping to finish the year off with, is it anything that you're just trying to finish out series or things like this, let me know. I'm always excited to know and yeah please don't forget to vote for the book of choice for the month and I think for this month, this month, this video the emoji is going to be oh you know what it's going to be christmas month so put a christmas emoji let's do a christmas present a christmas present emoji let's try and get into the christmas spirit i'm not a massive christmas person i'm not gonna lie but it is the month for it so a christmas present emoji if you made it this far if you did thank you so much i am as always impressed and thankful that you stuck with me for this long so <laughs> thank you so much for watching if you have enjoyed this video please do give it that thumbs up subscribe comment to let me know that you're here those three things are so important for the channel so thank you so much and yeah social media links will be linked below and I will of course catch you in the next one.